Well, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meet Pete Archie, the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Duffy, uh, you're a married man. You ought to be an expert on maritime relations. <laughs> Tell me, frankly, uh, what do you really think of marriage? <laughs> Duffy, you're busting me eardrums. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of marrying Peaches Latour. Peaches Latour, the striptease at the uh, Bijou Burlesque. Well, I don't know whether she'll have me, you know, with a dame like that, things is on one minute and off the next. <laughs> well, I think I could do worse. You did. <laughs> well, I might call her up and ask her. I'll call you back. Hello? Hello, Peaches? Just a second. Peaches, I stand here on me bended knee, asking you to... to commit nuptials. Yeah, to be me wife. But Peaches, money ain't everything. Well, there's lots of things like... like love, Hello? Hello? Mm. Charlie, I begin to suspect you don't love me no more. What makes you think so? Oh, nothing you could put your finger on. Just little things like she hung up on me, told me to drop dead, <laughs> wants to marry money. Incidentally, speaking of money, that old Mrs. Van Clyde was in this afternoon. Oh, money bags? Yeah, that rich old dame that used to go for you. Well, thanks anyway, Charlie, for getting rid of it. I didn't. She's coming back for you and dinner. Although I don't see how she can take the both of you at the same time. <laughs> Funny thing, huh? I turned down money for a dame that turns me down for money. What a twist of kismet. Archie, dear, I wish you'd been with me on the Riviera. Those European men. Nothing, huh? Well, they all look as though they've been washed up with the tide. Oh, you're rather an attractive hunk of flotsam, you know. <laughs> you. Oh, you have a way with the women, you handsome devil. I wonder nobody's marched you down the aisle. Oh, I almost marched down the aisle today, but I got bumped off at the runway. <laughs> Poor oh, dear boy, I know just how you feel. My second spouse ran around with a chorus girl. Your second spouse? How many spices have you had? Three. <laughs> but I'm always willing to make it a fourth. Well, maybe someday I'll beat a fourth. <laughs> but first, I'd have to knock off at least a fifth. Jeff, why do you always refuse me? But would you want a guy on the rebounds? Well, I might if he had some bounds left. <laughs> Mrs. Van Clyde, let me take another look at you. <laughs> I do. Oh, oh, Archie. Oh, my darling Please. husband. <laughs> We just got engaged. <laughs> well, maybe we should seal it with a... with a handshake. Well, what's the matter with the kids? Well, we've got to save something for the honeymoon. Chapter two. Community property. That property which is owned jointly between husband and wife, including bonds, security, real estate. What's the book you reading? What every young bridegroom should know. Well, here's your announcement. Smack dab in the middle of the society page. Oh, is my picture in it? No, nope, just the bride to be. <laughs> Brother, is that Van Klein Dave if that's so? Well, look, it takes two full columns to get a picture of her from the waist up. That, that. Among a herd of buffalo, she'd be considered petite. Besides, everybody can be beautiful. Yeah, but that gal ain't even trying. 
So what? As long as she's got a silk purse, I suppose she is a bit of a sow's ear. I see you're going into this marriage with your hands wide open. Certainly. There was a time in every guy's life when he should get married. All my life, I've been fickle to a lot of dames. So, I think it's time I get married and just be fickle to one. And besides, when Peaches hears about this, she might change her mind. There you are. What's this I hear about you getting married? That's right, Billy, and there's a lucky dame right there. Boy, she the doll. <laughs> well, I wouldn't get married if I was your watch. Why not? Well, look at the awful thing that happened to me father and me mother. What? They became a father and a mother. I see what you mean. Mm. Anyway, uh, why don't you run down to the missing persons bureau and see if you're on the list, huh? Hey, Arch, your EMT is here. Oh. Two flower girls, two train bearers for my wedding gown. Thank you. Oh, Archie, I'm so pleased to see you. Well, likewise, sir. Every moment that you have been away from me has seemed like a maternity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just dropped by to show you the design for our wedding invitations. Oh. It's all here, except that we haven't set the date. Well, shall we say June? Oh, we'll be married in June. No, uh, that's when we'll set the date. <laughs> Well, there's plenty of time for that. Now, I have a surprise for you. Only I don't want to embarrass you by talking about money. Pray embarrass me. <laughs> I have made arrangements with Bentle's department store for you to use my charge account. How sweet. Oh, I'd like you to buy a few clothes for the wedding. Oh, uh, me torso. <laughs> I can use your charge account? Our charge account. Well, now, I must run along. Now, don't forget, you're dining with me tonight. <laughs> and that's only an appetizer. Say, Archie, has Peaches heard you getting married? Well, I suppose she read about it in the newspapers. Why? <laughs> I saw her at the dance last night. Oh, yeah? I suppose the poor kid looked pretty unhappy, huh? Well, she was dancing with so many fellas, it was hard to tell. <laughs> dancing or hard? Huh? Funny thing about women, what they won't do to escape reality. Last time I saw her, she was escaping reality by necking a fella in a big convertible. <laughs> Defense complex. She just can't believe that it's all over between us. Why don't you call her up and console her? Maybe it'd be a nice thing to do. Hello, Peaches. It's Archie. Suppose you heard the sad news? Yeah, I read the papers. You know, I... I never got married before, because I always said I wanted my wife to have everything. A big car, big mansion, money, a yacht. Well, at last I found myself a dame who's got all of them. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm glad somebody else gets stuck with you. Yeah, at least you won't be bothering me. She's taking it pretty hard. <laughs> Look, honey, just to show you that there's no hard feelings, I'm going to let you buy me a wedding present. Will you? Oh! Beaches, watch your language. No, this is Dutch Treat. I'm paying for it. Now, what I want you to do is to run down to Bentle's department store and charge it to Mrs. Van Clyde in my name. And, uh, incidentally, you might get yourself a little gift. Maybe some little handkerchief to dry the tears away. <laughs> and consider it a souvenir from the man that you might have married if you had the decency to marry for love instead of for money. Maybe I should have left her on a little kinder note, huh? Archie! Oh. How do you like it? Ready made. Bentles? Oh, I charge you, Count. Trouble is, they didn't have one with a belt in the back. But I want to show it to Charlie. I've never seen you 
So, Minky. I came to bring Archie a little wedding present. Is it ticking? Certainly not. It's a fountain pen, which can also be used as an opener. You know, to write checks and open more charge accounts. Why don't you just get him a razor and let him cut his own throat the easy way? I'll give it to him. No, I want to thank him in person for the little souvenir he told me to get for myself. Have I ever seen you in that coat before? No. Oh. Got a new boyfriend? No. Oh. An old one. Oh. Do you think Archie will think this is dreamy? Huh? It'll knock him through a loop. I'll get him. He's in the back. Peaches. Oh. How's she taking it? Like Grant took Richmond. Hiya, Peaches. Oh, I brought you a little wedding present, Archie. Gee, you're taking this thing brave? I just hope this ain't something intimate, though, you know. I'm practically a married man. <laughs> By the way, I ain't never seen that coat before, have I? No. Oh. One of your rich friends? No. Oh. But aren't you going to let me thank you for the little souvenir you told me to get? Oh. Why did you get the little handkerchief, like I said? No. Oh. A pair of silk stockings? No. Mm, a little remembrance. You will to your dying day. I'll give you one more guess. Uh, what? This mink coat, you darling. <laughs> and wasn't I lucky? I got it on sale for only $3,000. 3000 Peaches. Just because I tell you to make a purchase, do you have to come back with Louisiana? The same old Archie. You're a cheapskate even with somebody else's money. Wait, Peaches. You can't go. I, I don't buy a mink every day, you know. You said it, tightwad. Uh, let's uh, celebrate the occasion. I'll, uh, I'll go and order a maggot of champagne. <laughs> Charlie, we gotta get that mink coat away from Peaches. Where are we going to get the wild horses? The wild horses couldn't do it. We've got to think of something, though. We have to resort to chickenry. What could we do? Tell her it's full of mice. Mice? No, mice is cheese lovers. They don't eat mink. Then tell her it's full of moths. Moths? That's it. Well, where's the champagne, maggot? Here in a second. What are you doing? No. Can't be. Take off that coat quick. It's infected. Infected? Yes. Deadly Siberian mink moth. I don't see any Siberian mink moths. It's because they're such tricky little devils. They fly sideways so you can't see them. You better take it off right away and get it moth through. It's tearing. It ain't tearing. They're eating it apart. Charlie, quick. The blip. Hey, cut that out. I'm getting out of here. Wait. You can't get out of here now. You'll inspect every mink in New York. Are you crazy? I still don't see anything. Oh, no. Here, we'll leave it to an innocent bystander. That's you. You see anything flying around here, or don't you? Oh, sure. I see them all the time. I'm talking about Siberian mink moths. And whatever you call them, there sure is a whole flock of them. <laughs> Miss me. I'll fix them. Now will you take me word? Ah. Wait, give me that coat. No! No, sir. Stand back, it's Demorus. Don't worry, I'll have it more proof. How long will it take? Well, day, week, month. What's time to a morn? I don't know what you're up to, but I'm coming back tonight, and that coat had better be ready for me, or I'll tell Mrs. Van Clyde you told me to charge it. Uh, Jolly, take care of things. I gotta take this coat back to the department store before me bride would be finds out that she's been clipped. Archie? 
I just found out that some young woman is charged a mink coat to my account, and in your name. Oh, it must be some mistake. Uh, you better get down to the store and correct it. In fact, if you walk slow enough, the correction might get there before you do. Well, a mink coat. And where did it come from? Who knows? Probably a couple of minks. Nice coat, huh? And who is the young woman to whom the store gave credit? Oh, uh, well, well, you know, you told me to get a torso, so I sent Miss Duffy down, and, uh... Oh, wait. Oh, I see. You dear, dear boy. You wanted to surprise me. <laughs> Darn it, I let it slip. Oh, and I spoiled it all, didn't I? You were going to give me this tonight at dinner. You're positively omnipotent. <laughs> Suppose I seem like a vulgar display of wealth. Oh, huh? you sweet, sweet angel. Please, <laughs> gratitude is one thing, but you don't have to make a slob of yourself. Well, I'll get you tonight, you tantalizing rascal. Now, don't forget, my place at eight. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, am I gonna parlay one mink to two dames? Got his pen again? Yeah. Okay, go get the gun. Oh, boy. Big, big, big. Big, 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 big. Hey, Arch, how are you gonna divide one mink coat among two women, one of which is big enough to wear two coats? Yes. Joey, this is the age of chiselry. There you go. I'm gonna heist Mrs. Van Clyde's coat and give it to Peaches. You what? You're going to steal her $3,000 mink coat? Why not? But ain't that bite in the hand that's going to feed you? I thought you were going to marry Mrs. Van Clyde. Well, I've been weighing the two dames, Charlie, and uh, on the one hand, Mrs. Van Clyde has prestige, social position, money, character. On the other hand, Peaches has everything a man really wants. Then you're going to use the old dame's coat for Peaches bait? Brother. Well, here's the way I figured, Charlie. I <clears throat> got a modicum of charm, and with me looks and me personality and the mink coat, she can't resist me. You're sure counting heavy in the mink coat. I'll take that from Wentz. Reach for the ceiling. This is a stick-up. <laughs> guess who? Be careful of that thing, you jerk. A jerk, huh? Just for that... I'm gonna rub you out. <laughs> you silly idiot! <laughs> Pretty good, Finnegan. Now look, you remember what you gotta do. The zero hour is 9.30. Now, remember? Oh, sure. Uh, at the stroke of 9.30, I enter the living room window, which you will leave. Open. Uh, I threaten her with me rusty weapon. Trusty. Yeah, a trusty weapon. I steal the coat uh, and blow. Good. Now, remember the address. 243 Skylar Drive. 243 Skylar Drive. I okay, got it. Archie, why don't you sit here beside me? Well, I like to walk after dinner. It helps the flow of the drastic juices. Oh. <laughs> just like to tantalize me. I said I'd get you tonight, you devil. Now, kiss me. Tell me something. Yes? Did you ever play the tube in Grossman's Pitkin Avenue Band? She, <laughs> the lights are low. We're alone together. My lips are close. Doesn't that suggest anything to you? Well, yeah, but I hate to eat and run. <laughs> you can't fool me. You're caught up in the madness of this moment. I am? Yeah. <laughs> Why, I can even feel you trembling. Well, it's very chilly. Hey, why don't you put on your mink coat? i never seen you in that mink. I'd like to see if the fur matches your complexion. Let's do that, huh? Oh, 
Well, all right. If you say so, I'll get the coat. <laughs> I feel just like a Vogue model. <laughs> Finnegan, you're ten minutes early. Thank goodness. Now, come on in. But be very quiet. She's got to get the mink. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe we better rehearse this so you don't house it up. Now, as soon as she walks in the room, say, you stick the gun in me, ribs. I'm not so hard. Be careful, I have a water pistol. I don't want to get this new suit soaking wet. Okay. Wouldn't it be funny if that thing went off during the holdup? <laughs> Good thinking, Finnegan. I'd hardly know it was you. Well, anyways, you see, as soon as she comes into the room, I grab the gun away from you, and you pretend it smacked me in the jaw, okay? Ready or not, here I go. Get behind the curtain. Here I am, your little bunny, all wrapped in me. My dear, you look positively ratty. <laughs> ratty and... Mm -hmm. I knew you'd weaken. Come to my arms. Stand back. I want to drink in all of you. <laughs> yeah, Zooks, what have we got here? I'm afraid we're at the mercy of the mink oh, I, I, I know you'll protect me. I never could marry a coward. You're right. Only a brave man is marry you. <laughs> Stranger, give me that gun before I trash you within an inch of me life. Don't risk your life for a mink coat, my dear. Dead. Stick up. It reached for the ceiling, everybody. Another one. Oh. Finnegan. Then, then you ain't. Mm. Ah, you ain't me. You want to get a face full of water? Get out of my way, stupid. Use your head. was using me head. Finnegan must have got away with the mink coat. Archie? Oh, Archie, you disarmed that thug and overpowered him. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing any brave guy with real red corpse suckles wouldn't do. Only trouble is his partner got away with the mink coat. Oh, what's a little mink matter when two people are in love? My dear, you'll never know. I hope. Oh, gee, it's swell. You know, for a while I thought Archie was up to something. But I guess I was wrong about him. Ah, oh, sure. Hi, Peaches. I was just down paying for the moth propen. How do you like the coat? Oh, Archie, it's so nice and warm. Should be, it's hot mink. Well, Peaches, now it's yours. All yours, forever. Oh, and if you want me, I'm all yours forever, too. I guess I'd better leave the room. Hey, Arch, and Mrs. Van Clive. <laughs> Why did you leave me alone when the police came? I was nearly out of my... What is this woman doing in that coat? Uh, what woman in what coat? This woman in my coat. There must be an explanation. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> Give me that coat, you hussy. Oh. Ah. You double-dealing worm. I'm glad I found you out in time. Goodbye. Okay, you cheap conniver. No coat, no peaches. Back to where I started. Well, Finnegan, I guess money ain't everything, huh? That's right, Arch. 
Plenty of people is happy without money. Sure. Take Mix, for instance. 